2001. One th oh, sorry, didn't see you there. This is strength training for triathletes. Welcome back to another video. Now, I had a question on my last video from Adrian K basically asking what do I do for strength training because I did mention I had been doing a bit in my off season so this is to help him out and also if you've been watching triathlon Dan Dan mate this is for you because your SNC routine could do with a bit of work so yeah let's get into it 10 half press ups just a quick disclaimer before I start I'm not an SNC professional so all of this is just kind of ideas or inspiration don't take any of it as gospel, I'm still learning myself, it's just kind of from the 10 years I've been doing try, this is what I've learned so far. So why do we strength train? You've only got a limited amount of hours in the day and it's kind of tricky to fit everything in. So for me, my inspiration is if you had two athletes that were the same fitness as each other, everything else the same, the stronger athlete will win when they go head to head. So that's a good enough reason for me. Um, it makes you more efficient at running, it increases your power on the bike, and ultimately it makes you kind of a more injury-proof athlete. So that bulletproofness means that you can get more consistent training in, and that's the most important thing when it comes to moving yourself on as an athlete. In my opinion, the best way to get started with SNC is take a visit to like an SNC professional, personal coach sort of person that maybe has, well, preferably has experience within endurance sport. You want someone that you can take your goals and aims and what you want to achieve from a strength kind of program, tell them about it, they'll likely do some sort of screening process to assess where your weaknesses are, and then they'll write you out a plan that's progressive and ultimately gets you to your goals. If you can't get access to this, then maybe ask a friend or get researching yourself. You definitely want to be informed on this stuff because you can do more harm than good if you're doing the wrong sort of things. The beauty of SNC is that you don't need much to get started. It's not going to break the bank in the same way that getting a bike is going to. So for our home gym, we have a few floor mats, so like carpet or foam mats that you can pick up from the middle aisle at Audi normally. We've got a squat rack, which cost me about 70 quid off eBay. We've got an Olympic bar, which is about 80 quid as well, I think. So that's a 20 kilo bar. And we have a kettlebell of a length of stretch elastic material. And we also have a footstool, or you could even use a chair to stand or sit on. We also have a few weights for the bar. These are quite expensive, so it's kind of maybe good to work up once you nail the like movements and the basics. And we also have a skateboard, would you believe it? I'll show you why later during the kind of session that I've got planned for this evening. Whee! Okay, so you've got all that stuff and you're ready to go. I find the best way normally to warm up for a session is kind of like a 10, 15 minute easy cardio activity. I might be on the bike, running, I've used it at the gym, the rowing machine or like one of those crazy cross trainer things. Um, yeah, just something you can do to get the blood flowing around your muscles and get your heart rate up a bit. So the session I'm about to do tonight, uh, Catherine and I normally do two strength sessions a week on a Monday and a Thursday. And there are four sessions in total. So week one, we do session one, session two. Week two, we do session three, session four. And then by week three, we're back to session one, session two again. So tonight we've got session two of that program. It starts with a few non-weight bearing warm-up exercises. So we've got lunges, yoga push-ups, a few squats, some squat jumps as well. And then after that, we move on to the kind of some run specific conditioning. So we've got a few single legged hops and some other kind of conditioning, bounding style work, which is great for moving on your run efficiency. So the main session of all of the sessions that I do is split kind of into three blocks of three exercises. So nine exercises in total. And each of those blocks you go through three times. So you might have different numbers of reps for all those exercises, but you'll go through each block then you'll take a rest and then you'll go through it three more times before moving on to the next block. I think that makes sense. I'm sorry if that's a bit confusing, but that's the best I can do. Also worth pointing out that in between each block you've got 90 seconds rest. So that means you're probably working maybe 90 seconds, two minutes on and then having 90 second rest. So we tend to work to that sort of work to rest ratio. We have to start goblet squats with a kettlebell. Um, you can obviously increase the weight on the kettlebell as you want to kind of make these more difficult. Then we have press-ups. Once again, this session, the, the progression element of it is that the press-ups, you do more of them each week. And then finally we have the, 
the barbell rollout, or you can use one of those little rollout wheels, or as we have here, a skateboard. It's a pretty versatile tool for gym work as well, would you believe? So, not a misspent childhood. The next set, we start off with deadlift. Because of the setup we've got, we kind of do the deadlift first because the second half of the set also uses the squat racks. So the second half of the set is inverted rows. And then after the inverted rows, we have double leg lowers on the mat. The final set of three exercises, we have single leg squats, which we do to this kind of, it's a footstool, but it's our box effectively and then single leg stiff leg deadlifts using the bar and then finally finishing with a moving plank drill. So rather than just doing static plank, this involves a little bit more movement. So there you go, that's what a normal gym session looks like for me as well as the reasons why I do it. Hopefully that's enough information to get you started on something similar. Definitely recommend it over the winter and I think most S&C guys do recommend you keep doing that through the season, although maybe not so much progressing it, but maintaining what you've kind of built up over the winter. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Uh, if you've got any questions about any of that stuff at all, leave them down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer or consult someone who does actually know what he's talking about and try and get them to answer vicariously through me. And if you're new here, subscribe. That'd be great. I'll uh, see you in the next one.